What is up, nation? Long time no talk. And this is probably one of the hardest videos I've ever had to make my entire life for obvious reasons, looking at the news. And the reason why it's so hard is not because of the actual news. I can handle bad stuff happening to me. It's happened to me my entire life. I've dealt with it. I can compartmentalize it and work it out on my own and then just move on. The, the worst thing for me is uh, seeing how friends and family react to it. It breaks my heart sometimes because I just hate see seeing them so sad. And so my natural, uh, my, my natural defense mechanism is to go make jokes or ma do silly things, make them laugh, to go and calm them down, uh, to help them deal with it too. And also just to show that, hey, I'm okay. But damn, man, how do I do that with prostate cancer? Thinking, how do I make jokes and do silly things to make people laugh? Well, here goes nothing. And just to let you guys know ahead of time, you might be seeing some jump cuts in this video. And the reason why is because I'm probably going to get emotional talking about this. And if I do, I'm just going to want to go and stop the video, compose myself, and get back to it. But I know some of you guys out there are still going to support me. If you want to cry, you go ahead and cry. Cry with you. See, Big Kev's got my back. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Anyways, just to get... Started in the story, but before I do, man, I'm really going to need something to get me through this. So, cheers. Yes, I did get that for the gag. Anyways, um, months ago, I, I have my notes over here. Uh, months ago, I started getting massive pain. It started out small at first, but it was starting to get massive bad. I mean, bad to the point where I could understand why people want assisted suicide type pain. It was that bad. I can handle pain. It's not a big problem. But if I had to handle this for like maybe 12 hours, I would be going insane by then. It was so bad. Anyways, um, I, I was lucky that I was in America at the time when it was really starting to rev up. I got this a great pain reliever called Aleve. And I took it every 12 hours, but I had to take more and more. I was to the point where I was taking almost 20 a day and having to chew them up just to get the stuff into my bloodstream. And yeah, that's when I said, God almighty, man, I need to go to the hospital to get this um, checked out. So I went to the hospital, I get a barrage of tests. And like one of the, I, I got to tell you, one of the really uh, funky ones that they had to take since my blood work was like, all oh, oh, crazy, was um, uh, bone marrow. And so when I was in the hospital just uh, getting tests uh, uh, for like about two, three days, um, the blood doctor, she came in and she was just going to do the bone marrow test and she decided she's going to take it from the chest. And so she was, okay, you know, I'm going to go and uh, put the needle in right here. And when she did, it's like, Ugh. and then she started to extract the bone marrow. She started taking it out. And this what happened. <laughs> yeah, it honestly felt like my soul was being extracted. It was, it was funky, man. <laughs> And I had some other tests too, like one of the things I had was uh, the CAT scan. And that one, it, show, it showed what the problem was. And um, it looked like there was 
cancer in my prostate and like one or two other spots too. And so I had to go get a blood test as well. And the blood test was uh, called a prostate specific antigen test, a PSA. And my number came back at 2,450. Now just to give you guys some color on that, people get worried when the number is five. So with me having 2,450, that wasn't good. And so Doc did confirm uh, I was with his suspicions that I was at stage four prostate cancer, but he wasn't worried because he was pretty positive it wasn't aggressive. And uh, when he and I wanted to do a biopsy, which is basically a needle getting stuck into the prostate to go and get um, uh, get samples to go and get tested just to see the aggressiveness of the cancer. And I made a joke and was telling the urologist about you know how the bone marrow felt when it got extracted. And he started to laugh and said that that's exactly what people say with the um, with the biopsy if they just get uh, if they don't get sedative and they just get the area pain free so the needle can go in. So he said, I, so I highly suggest that you uh, get put under if that's how you felt when uh, you were getting your bone marrow extracted. And I said, sold, let's do it doc. And so with the news of probably, not probably, definitely being stage four prostate cancer, honestly, I wasn't worried and it, Sounds funny for me to say, but I wasn't even impressed. I've been through, I, I'm a, I've gone through a lot of trauma in my life. I'm a trauma survivor. And with everything I've been through, everything I've overcome, stopped, defeated, this is just going to be another notch on my belt of just things whose ass I kicked. I've had, I've, kicked the ass of severe depression, blood clot last year that almost killed me. That thing was gone. And some other stuff too. So honestly, with the, I, I, I'll admit, I did cry about it for, and I'm not joking to say this or saying this to sound like a tough guy. I probably cried about it for like 10 seconds. And that's it. But then I said, all right, time to deal with this. And the other thing too is I also just refuse to lose hope because when you think stage four prostate cancer, you think, oh my God, my life is over. And when I was researching it online, <laughs> that really didn't help things any. I wasn't getting worried about it, but I was looking at every, there's, I'm 42 years old. I got this when I was just before I turned 42. And wow, <laughs> every other website that's it, that, is talking about someone in, my for in their 40s getting prostate cancer. Website number one, dead. And website number two, I found dead. Website number three, dead. So I just, I, I wasn't gonna lose hope that way. And also I've, I've been down the pit of hopelessness before where I have lost hope in my life uh, from a few years ago. And that was a very hard pit to climb out of. And I swore I was never going to go down that again. And so far, I've been pretty successful. I mean, I'm getting through this pretty well. If I can get through this pretty well, I can get through damn near anything. So um, after I did the biopsy with the doc, um, I've, oh, I forgot to tell you, when he told me what my level of prostate cancer was, he said, there's only one option that I had at this level. He said it was hormone therapy, where he said there are two th things you can do. The first is to get some shots that you'd have to get not like maybe every three months. The bad side about those things is, or what they do is they pretty much kill off all the testosterone in your body and they have to 
um, do it every three, some of them, uh, they do it every three months. And because the testosterone is the main thing that the cancer will go after for fuel. The other option, or he's, but he didn't recommend it because one, those things are super expensive. And plus my, uh, I, I didn't think my <laughs> medical insurance covered it. Two, man, you get some crazy side effects from those things. He said the better option was actually getting my testicles removed and just go after the main fuel source that way. So oof, that kind of stuff, that's a lot to take in right there. But after getting my um, score coming back from the biopsy where it said uh, the scale, uh, it's called the Gleason. Uh, the scale is between six and 10, I believe, where six is just not really that aggressive and uh, 10 is super aggressive. I actually got a seven, which really I was thankful for and really blew me away with having such a high PSA, but my Gleason is only seven. I called that a, a passive aggressive type cancer where and it's just gonna sit there and say a bunch of mean things, but really not do anything. So I was pretty, again, pretty lucky and fortunate for that. And so I just took a weekend to think of is this a route that I want to go? And then I just got in contact with the doctor on Monday and said, Doc, let's do it. So I went in, had the schedule for having my testicles removed, and he was said he was going to go and replace them with um, prosthetic ones just for mental health for lack of a better term, which I, I don't understand the mental science behind it, but at the same time, I can still see why he was going to want to do that. So I was like, all right, cool, no problem. And so finally, it got to the point where I was, it was the day where I had the operation. And looking at my notes here, and... I went into operating room, went under, woke up, and just reflecting on what happened. And then I went back to my room. And while I was there in my room thinking, all right, well, here's the start of a new way of life. I, I noticed something. Basically, he told me that when he removed them, the prosthetics that he's going to put in were going to be small. I had cantaloupes. <laughs> I was wondering, what the heck? And I had feeling down there, too. I didn't know it was phantom limb feeling or what. And uh, the doc told me he decided at the last second to uh, just drain uh, me of testosterone. And the best way to describe the um, uh, the procedure without getting too gross or graphic is imagine you have a hard-boiled egg. Just take a knife. It's the perfect hard-boiled egg, man. Everything about it is perfect. You just take a knife, you open up the shell, you take out the egg whites, leave the yolk in, close the shell up. And that's basically what he did. And it just still, it's still funky to think that that's what happened, but What's really cool is it worked. It was awesome. And I started feeling better immediately. The next thing I had to do was radiation therapy because the cancer moved into my bones. And I had almost like 18 sessions of that. Um, I had to come back ne uh, uh, the next week to go and uh, have that taken care of. And I actually had to do it in another hospital, too, so I got a ride from the... Uh, I got my own limousine ambulance ride over there. And the fir after the first session coming back, I, I was feeling fine. It's like, okay, this really wasn't all that bad. Then all of a sudden... 
and the people that were with me, I said, you have about, I can hold this in for about 20 seconds. I need something to puke into or else we're going to be in trouble here. And they got it back for me. And, bleh, and somehow, whatever it was, it was with the radiation, it made me puke. And then when I got back to the room, uh, about two hours later, the blood doctor came in to visit me and check on me, see how I was doing. And, how, and she asked me how the radiation was. I said, oh, let me tell you about what happened. <clears throat> And I ran off to the bathroom, threw up again, and when I came back to the my bed and looked at the doctor, I said, that's what happened. So she gave me uh, some medicine to go and stop the nausea, but yeah, the the radiation, it, uh, it worked great. Uh, so the pain is absolutely at a bare minimal on my legs. It doesn't feel like my legs are walking around in a... In a, in a metallic vice grip ready to turn my bones into ash. That was awesome. And the, the nurses at that hospital were absolutely amazing. It was, in my second week there, what was really sweet of them, they actually asked me, oh, Mr. Matthew, can you come back next week? <laughs> And that was so nice of them to say. And the um, w one of the guys I know there, he was telling me that, yeah, they definitely appreciate you being so nice and so cool because there are a lot of patients that come in that give the nurses hell. So they're pretty grateful that you're cool. And um, I guess, like, oh, uh, one of the things, and I don't have this on my notes, but I remember it too because this is a, cool story, and it has some humor in it too, that uh, the blood doctor, she came in um, on one of my like last two days of being in the hospital for the radiation therapy, uh, she told me that I was going to have to uh, get prescribed some shots that I had to give to myself. I was like, all right. And she was really nervous about it too. She had this nervous look on her face. And I was just like, okay. And sh then she told me the price. It was, I think about $15 per needle once a day. And I, and I asked her, okay, what's the average? I said, I'm not gonna hold you to this, but what's the average time that someone has to uh, give themselves these shots? And the main reason why she wanted to wanted me to take them was because um, since I've uh, since I had blood clot last year there is a certain level in my blood where the cancer could control my blood clot or could control creating a blood clot so this shot would be keeping that at bay until everything normalized in my blood and yeah she, it, it was I think like $15 a shot I was like oh and I'd have to take it for maybe three months I thought, oh, okay, all right, one thing at a time. And the next day I was told that I was going to be taught, because the nurses were doing it for about two days, and then um, the next day I was told that I was going to be taught how to give myself the shot when I go home. So, all right, no problem. And when uh, the nurse came in to teach me how to give myself the shot, there were interns that came in. Oh, people I got to mess with. Oh, and so when she was giving me the needle and just explaining, okay, this is what you do. Just take some alcohol swab, just put it on your stomach there and then give yourself a shot. And I was like, all right, cool. And I'll just, all right, so this is how you do it, right? And I thought, oh, this is gonna be so cool. And then I just stuck the needle in my stomach and ah! I started to inject the stuff in my stomach ah! and the interns, poor girls, I scared the hell out of them. <laughs> it was the greatest thing ever. And then I stopped and I looked at them, started to laugh and they got that I played a joke on them. But I had to apologize. They're like, no problem, no problem. And I even was laughing with the nurse before, uh, since she was the last one to let leave. And 
I looked at the nurse and I said to her in Thai, Pum my sabai, <laughs> which means Pum I, my sabai, not good. <laughs> so I'm not good. And she just laughed and shook her head at me and walked out. But the um, coolest part here was my final day there at the hospital. The doc, although this scared the hell out of me at first, the blood doctor, she said, you know, just to be on the safe side before you leave, we need to uh, do a blood clot test. Blood clots form in the legs. So I thought, all right, no problem. And I wasn't really looking forward to it. And it was very nerve wracking test because the, the people that were given the um, ultrasound scan for the blood clot test, they were making way too much noise. They're just going, mm -mm. oh, ooh, oh, oh, mm. I thought, oh, mm, shut up, shut up. And then after I was done, I, I went back up to my room and the, um, the doc, she came up pretty damn quick after uh, the uh, test, test results were given. And I looked at my, I, I did research on this later, but when it comes to blood clots coming back or just getting blood clots at all, if you've never had one, there's that much chance you're going to get a blood clot. If you already had a blood clot, you have a better than average chance of getting another one. That said, uh, and what I was looking at online, it said, then if you know you're sick or you have a disease, depending on how big the disease is, your chances of getting a blood clot are shooting way up high. So I guess in my case, it would have been right to ask, oh, how many blood clots does he have? But it came back zero. No fucking blood clots. That was such amazing news. I was so happy. I cried harder than I am now. Uh, but yeah, that was so happy because I wouldn't have to put up with that crap again because that when I first had that blood clot, although it was like a few hours away from killing me before I got to the office or to the hospital, it sucked to deal with, man. It, it sucked. But it, it just made me so happy seeing that I had nothing. I didn't have to worry about it <laughs> or worry about those things again. And then even, even better with some uh, blood work after... Uh, she, uh, the blood work was getting better so quick that she said, I, I probably need a few days more of those shots instead of three months. That was awesome. I don't want to sit here and say that I'm blessed or anything like that, even though I do have a relationship with God, but it, because or I, I'd rather say that I'm lucky and very fortunate. Because yeah, if I say I'm blessed, there are people that have it worse off than me. And I've had it pretty bad, as you can tell from the story. And if I say I'm blessed, I, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to those that don't have it as good as me. Because it, it makes it sound like, okay, Matt's blessed, but are, are these people, are they not blessed? So I, I was very fortunate. And I, I was just very lucky, man. So that was the... That was like the best news ever. And even better is a, a week after I had the initial operation, my PSA, it was at 2,450. The first week, it was down to 490. And then the another test I had, I think two, three weeks later, 165. And I think like three weeks ago, I took a blood test, 35. I'm going to be seeing the um, urologist, not urologist, oncologist who deals with cancer stuff uh, in two weeks. And I'm gunning for it being one digit, one. 
And eventually this thing's going to just psh, be undetectable, disappear. So basically, in short, man, I'm, I'm living a normal life. It's, and I'm getting back, or I'm getting back to living a normal life, man. And it's really, really exciting. It's because uh, as much as uh, my con, I'm, I'm grateful for my condo, especially since this is more my, uh, I do a lot of uh, online teaching, which really saved my butt, man, because I couldn't work while I was going through the treatment. That's the benefit of having two multiple sources of income because uh, I couldn't work during the day. I could only tutor at night. So I didn't have to borrow that much money from mom and dad, but I still had to borrow money from them because I my money just went down to zero. The good thing is I, I forgot my train of thought. It's the cancer. But the good thing is I'm here in Thailand and the prices here are actually respectful. They're actually pretty damn low. I think in total with the money that I've borrowed from mom and dad and what I've paid, all this stuff, especially since I have one more thing in about two weeks where um, I completely forgot about this. I'm going to see the gastro, uh, gastrointestinal guy again and have a little... And, Scopey or whatever, I, uh, whatever it's called, but he's going to stick something down my throat and um, <clears throat> to go into my intestines to go and cut out some polyps because, <laughs> because if I don't get that stuff cut out, I'm going to have a different type of cancer. So um, I, I, that's my last thing that I have to borrow money from, but uh, every, I think at the most I've maybe paid 12000 in America, that'd be just for like two sessions of radiation therapy. That's nuts. America, you gotta wake up, do something like that. So yeah, I'm, li I'm living a normal life, guys. I'm not getting fitted for a, a harp or angel wings anytime soon. Once the, once the reading for the PSA is down, it's going to be gone for a long time. It's going to be quite a while. And I'm going to make sure um, it's not going to show its ugly head anytime soon. And um, the way I move on from here, other than uh, I'm going to be starting back up work again uh, during the day, which is going to be awesome. I'll go back to having two sources of income, which is going to be cool. I'm, I'm going to make another video about this because this has been pretty long. If you've been watching this for such a long time, trust me, man, I, uh, you have my gratitude for listening to my story. And I really do hope that you uh, spread this and send it out to others. Uh, that I lost my train of thought again, but that's why I paused it. But I got it back somehow. I'm actually going to be asking for help from uh, some of you guys, and I have some actual cool ways to do it. I want to add value to the ways you could help me. I want to give something to you if you... But I'll explain it in the next video. But also at the same time, if uh, it has to do with t-shirts, and it also has to do if you want to tutor online too for another source of income, Go ahead, man. Sign up through my link. I'm going to get about 100 bucks if you uh, become part of the company. And it's going to be really cool. And, uh, and the third source, I'm already going to have it up. It's going to be a GoFundMe account. I was really against and almost embarrassed doing it, but I'll say this again. I, I, if you want to give, it's... I, I, I'm giving you this opportunity to do it. And trust me, I'm gonna be completely grateful for any money that you give me so I can pay back my parents. I wanna pay it back as soon as I can. And even like 10, 20 bucks, even five, I'm gonna be grateful for. Trust me, I will be. 
Uh, okay, guys, that's it. Um, my notes somehow seem to have disappeared, and um, I don't have a way to close this off. So I'll definitely see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means a lot to me. And please spread this around to so people can see my story, even though I started to ramble at the end of it. <laughs> and just to give awareness that, hey, even someone young in their 40, early 40s can still get prostate cancer. So don't mess around with avoiding it. Do it now. At least get the blood PSA blood test, man. So guys, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Gotta watch Matt. Signing off. See ya.